Welcome back here, folks, for another episode of The Corner. God damn, we have been productive this week, uploading a lot of episodes. Um, and more is coming, by the way. Today we have on my uh, co-host, uh, Alexander, who is just back from a trip to uh, uh, Germany. So he is sitting yeah. in COVID isolation in his apartment. How are you exactly. doing today, Alexander? Um, pretty good. Uh, I was just down to Trier. I don't know if there's any uh, Germans listening to this, but uh, if there are, you you will know that um, uh, that is down in the very southwest of Germany. So it's almost yep. uh, almost on the border to Lux to Luxembourg, actually, because yeah. um, my brother is doing an, uh, an, uh, an uh, a semester abroad there, so uh, he's very excited. <laughs> Sitting there with your vodka. What is that? <laughs> it's just water. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, like uh, he's doing a semester abroad there, so he's very excited, and I was lucky enough to accompany him and and uh, bring my suitcase so that he could have some more stuff with there uh, and see some of the country down there in Trier. So that was uh, that was very much of an experience. Plus, I got a lot of train time, a lot of time on the train to read. I read um, le the last thing of the Great Gatsby, which I believe we're going to uh, yeah. to discuss a little bit about in this episode, I guess. Yeah. And uh, read some uh, Fall of Gondolin, a uh, book by J.R.R. Tolkien, edited by Christopher Tolkien. Uh, very cool. good book, very good tale as well. And then I read. Um, story engineering by Larry Brooks, a very good uh, book about how to write your, how to become a writer, basically, I like how to get uh, a good story uh, set up, and how to get the characters, the theme and everything just right. So yeah, like feeling very uh, informed, very well informed about uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these subjects. But I don't know. I'll, I'll let it up to you, man, to see what 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 you want to uh, to to take as the first subject here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just before I get to that, like I was gonna say that I have also been to the Trier. Um, mm. Slept in a hostel, actually. Oh right. What do you Thank think you. about the, the the train station? I, I wasn't at the train station I think, because we <laughs> okay uh, no like we, okay we, what do you think about the city then just the city like i thought it was like really nice it's it's really old right and yeah, there's yeah. tons tons of germans that are taking the the travel between the uh, trier and luxembourg since mm. the pay is a lot higher in luxembourg than in germany yeah uh, especially in like the finance sector but yeah. like you know, like what what I remember the most is that we went to this like pizza place or something, and uh, we all ordered um, ordered a large beer, right? And they come with a fucking boot of a liter of beer in it, and so you're like standing there like this huge thing and being like, what the fuck is that? You ordered a large beer, <laughs> right? <laughs> mm. but uh yeah man if there's Germany. if there's one thing if there's if there's one thing the germans like it is beer that is yeah. that is a universal fact at this point and yeah. also like if you buy if you buy canned beer in germany you're a uh can we swear in this uh episode yeah man go for it can we swear then, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you are a it. fucking fool if you buy canned yeah. beer in Germany because yeah. because bottled beer is so cheap down there. Like it is literally like like there's maybe thirty cents difference from a bottle to uh, to 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 a can. But yeah, uh, like if you're down there in Germany, you buy bottled beer because that's what everybody buys. So. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and yeah. plus, it, it tastes is, much. It, 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 it tastes much better from a bottle, and 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 bottled beer usually is much better quality as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, definitely is. It's it's for sure better. Uh, yeah. To, yeah. To, to 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 do it that way. And like that's also um, like the thing that it is like pretty cheap in Germany for for special beer. 
IPAs, yeah, yeah. American pale ales, and all Definitely. that. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it is. It is also cheap in in uh, Denmark where we live, but not to that yeah. extent because like in, no. in Germany it is like almost every every beer is uh, f- three euros or less. Yeah. Yeah. Three euros. Three I mean, euros is I like mean, max. In Denmark, we we have breweries too, like the Tuborg in Carlsberg, but that's not really special beer. That's like that's like more standardized. Uh, even though it is good beer, but it is just more standard beer that that if, like for the everyday Joe, for for the everyday man. Uh, yeah. Whereas uh, yeah. in Germany, you have all these very specialized small breweries that have their own brand, that have their own unique touch on the beer. And yeah. so it's like it's like uh, it's almost competitive in but but still in a in a civilized way it's uh, it's like it's the best form of market competition you can have with yeah. the beer beer market in Germany I think uh, yeah so yeah it is of course great. they also have the big beer companies but uh, but uh, like they are they're not as big as uh, as Carlsberg and Tuborg are in Denmark. I'm, and I I wouldn't even know like if you if you ha- if you put a gun to my head and said come up with a big beer company in Germany right now uh, that sells standard beer, uh, I would maybe just be able to say but like maybe Krumbacher. I don't know. Um, but other yeah. than that, I can't really remember any any other things. No, they're really not because a lot of it is just specialized. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, so, like yeah. a shout shout out to Germany for for making that happen <laughs> with uh, beer being accessible yeah, yeah. to pretty much everybody, no matter if you're the average show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the, like, the average uh, show. If you ever find yourself in Norway, then I think like the, the price of a special beer is uh, five, six, or seven euros, maybe more. Mm. It's hell expensive. Uh, anyways, yeah. enough money talk, enough bullshit talk about money <laughs> um, and beer. Uh, and beer. And let's move on. We have been reading The Great Gatsby, uh, yeah. and you have finished it. Like I'm on chapter seven, but I have I've seen the movie, and I think I have read the book before a long time ago. Uh, so I know that how it ends, and um, mm. I'm still still not cease. It still don't cease to amaze me though even though I know all these things uh, about the book, because every time you read the book, there is something new that you discover. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, like what we will, like what we will get to. Um, but what I, what I really liked is how the book starts because it goes a while. Have, before you, have you read we the are book actually, before? Yeah. For a long time ago, you know, like 10 years ago. Um, oh, yeah. it's this, Cause it is because uh, I gotta say that this was yeah this was my first time I read the book yeah uh, uh, and, like still, and I, probably, I gotta say no oh, yeah you're you're probably going to read it again yeah. I'm I'm sure that you're going to read it again in like five years and be yeah. like, and, and still be yeah, just as amazed as you were the first time you read it now um, yeah but yeah I, because I, it's I, not it was, a long book actually it's it's just uh, it's 115 pages at least my yeah. copy was was that long so yeah. it's uh it, and and like each chapter it has nine chapters and each chapter takes maybe like one hour to read so it's a pretty quick read through like it takes you nine ten hours to read if you read in just a normal pace not not fast yeah. speeding it uh so yeah so that's so what what really uh what really like don't cease to amaze me about the book is the beginning because it takes a while before gatsby is even introduced nick is really interested yeah, yeah. like our main man our, our main man is like really interested he's like who is this gatsby character i, I, I like to hear more, more about it because you have all these rumors that is like circulating around the air uh about him you know like how did he get his money i heard he killed yeah. a man heard he was in the great war in the army uh, in the in the army right yeah. so so he's so he's like naturally really intrigued about this because it seems like an interesting character to get to know right but every yeah. time he brings it up then it is just quashed like it seems like you know like nobody gives a shit about who he is and this is like something that i'm first 
now catching that shouldn't Nick's uh, the, the party that surrounds Nick shouldn't shouldn't these people be acquainted with Gatsby's parties since he throws these giant parties on Long Island in West Egg? Mm. But uh, yeah, but absolutely. No. Yeah. And uh, we uh, like maybe though, maybe though, like they haven't been invited and they haven't been here. But we are later told that these parties are so big that anybody just shows up, right? And yeah. uh, and Gatsby is too polite to to go and to and turn them people. down. Yeah, yeah, to turn them down and say that mm. no, nah, you can't be here, right? He uh, he he just he's just like a, a happy man, being like you know, like the more the merrier. Come on, right? Um, mm. So which which shows it, I think a very important message in the book, uh, which is like uh, how you should live your life because Gatsby is not a person that lives for for the money. Uh, he like he's spending. He's, he's actually very much a character that is spending money and doesn't really care about it. All he cares about is uh, is the, the 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 party is the 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 feel is his own his own character and his, his relationship with Daisy, if you, if, if, if you know what I mean. So like, yeah. he's not, yeah. he's definitely not greedy. That's, I think that's one of the very few things that we can say is, uh, is pretty clear throughout the book. Um, yeah. He's, he's not greedy. But yeah. it, and like, it is, it is like later, uh, later, you know, shown that he's doing all these, this for Daisy. But yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But, but, we'll, uh, but we'll get to that before that. Like I want to like talk about a little more, and we have like the the sight Fitzgerald have on women, which is how he experienced the world in the 1920s, right? Where you have yeah, like, yeah. this this one chapter like very early in the book where they all go to this party. Tom, the asshole, brings uh, brings her main man Nick to uh, to a party together with his. Uh, mistress because he felt for some unknown reason that nick had to meet his mistress <laughs> right yeah. uh this this yeah. is like some this is like a part out where i was like thinking like what the fuck really you know because uh most people at least in in 2021 would at least be wanting to keep their mistresses a secret I would yeah, yeah, if they if yeah. they had one, but uh, this is nineteen twenty. This is nineteen twenty something. Tom, don't give a shit. It's a man's world, and he does whatever <laughs> the fuck he uh, whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. And uh, now we get to the part where, like, why I think that he is like the, uh, the biggest asshole there is because they go to this party, and uh, and his mistress, what's her name, Myrtle. Myrtle. Uh, Myrtle, yeah, Myrtle, Will, yeah, Myrtle, Myrtle Wilson. Myr Myrtle yeah. Wilson, yeah. Yeah. Uh, starts, you know, to get drunk and starts to say the name of Tom's uh, wife, Daisy, over and over again. And this mm. pisses Tom off, tells her to shut up, and then he fucking breaks her nose. And according, yeah, to, how he, according to how he writes it, then there's like blood gushing out uh, everywhere, you know, because that was that was yeah. that was the most dramatic uh, scene in the entire it maybe except for the ending, which I'm not going yeah. to spoil here. But yeah, that was that was yeah. the, the most dramatic scene in the entire book. But the, where I was, the, yeah. the, the, the act isn't really what shocked me that what really shocked me is the is how everybody else is behaving. Because mm. nobody yeah. gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit that it's happening. Yeah, yeah, but but right. that's what I mean too. Like the, yeah. the, the everybody was like just uh, yeah, like and going on about their business and and like this this is just the way it is. And 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 I was just like sitting there. Wow, a that's... woman has just gotten punched her nose. If this was today, there would be there would be police. There would be fucking yeah. hospital hospitals yeah. like uh, ambulances involved as well. Like, and there would the be the, the, the there would be like an ambulance rushing to the ER. There would be police. There would be arrests, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. not in nineteen, not in nineteen twenty, man. Uh, yeah. and, and the owner of the apartment, who is some photographer, is like rushing, uh, rushing in their direction. At this point, I'm like thinking, like, okay, maybe he's uh, maybe he's rushing towards them to to fucking punch Tom or you know like something, right? 
But no, yeah. he's rushing to cover up his paintings so they don't get blood on them. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or photographs. Uh, yeah, man. Like, that was just, like, insane to read. But I guess this was the, the world back then, a hundred years ago. Um, mm. And Daisy is also, like, seen to be semi-aware of that Tom is cheating on her on the side. But she don't really want a divorce at this point because she's a Catholic. And to get a divorce as a Catholic in 1920 was unheard of. Yeah. You're going to take the, uh, are you gonna take the Lord's name in vain? Or, or yeah. what, you know, uh, uh, like, till death do us apart. Means till death do us apart. No. <laughs> Apparently for hardcore uh, Catholics at this time. And... You know, like yeah. I'm assuming that this is also why she never leaves Tom even after she starts the relationship with Gatsby again. Yeah. Uh, because Daisy had been together with Gatsby before. Yeah, yeah. Five, five, years, five, uh, years, five, five years. Yeah. 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 Um, now, I gotta say, uh, it it is amazing. You say this is the, your second read through of the book. Uh, yeah. And and you've watched a movie one time as well, so so yeah. you're a little bit ahead of me in in details. Like I still am, am a little bit of a little, little bit hazy on on a lot of the details because I this is also one something I want to discuss about Fitzgerald's language in the book. It is very uh, advanced, like but it could have something to do with the fact that we're not English, we're not American, we are Scandinavian, so we may not have a like really advanced and expert level no, grasp no, man. No, of man. the English language. But there it's... is a lot of a lot of uh words in the book that Fitzgerald uses that I had to Google simply because I didn't know what they mean. It it's it's I... it's, it's... Yeah. It's true, it's true, but it's definitely not the worst of the old timers in history that has written. Uh, no, no, written definitely not. But if, but he is up if, there. He is up if, there. Like he's up there. Uh, but if you for want, for if instance, you... like the, the the word he uses the mostly, which I which I uh, like picked up on, was the word incredulous. Do you know what that means? Uh, what does it mean? It is like uh, being being suspicious and 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 skeptic about something, like be, being more like um, in a in a uh, in a very like hmm, is that something uh, you mean like that? You know, like that uh, kind of feeling. Okay. And I was okay, like, okay, this okay, is I mentioned so often throughout the book, and I was like, what the? Now I have to Google it because I read that word like over and over again, and but that's the beautiful thing about authors using for like words you don't really understand is that uh, the more they are mentioned in the book the more you think uh shit man a at some point and this is this is where repetition comes in repetition is the best part to learn the best way to learn because at some point you think to yourself damn it now i fucking read that thing for 50 times now i want to google it and figure out what the fuck it means yeah 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 you're true and you're also yeah. like right in in the advanced level that they're, they're that they're writing because like how i'm like uh, how i would like say it is that if you ever read uh tom clancy it is really simple really really simple yeah, language yeah, that is yeah. that is writing if you yeah. read uh, any john grisham it is still simple but it has some you know like some words that you like might google right but it's yeah. it's not something that you won't pick up on what's the understanding on later while you're reading it and also uh, like well th that's another good point while you're reading you don't have to you don't have to google them no, uh, because, because because you you understand the context, of course. You understand so, the know. context, yeah, yeah exactly. the, the whole context um, of it. But, then, but, then, but 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 then again, yeah. But then again, if you read a word fifty times throughout uh, one chapter, or oh, like throughout uh, two chapters, and fifty more times throughout this, the following second two chapters, then at some point you you will Google it because you're getting curious. Because yeah. if you've read yeah. a word fifty times and you still don't understand it, then you're yeah. like. No, man, I got to Google it now. So, uh, and then you have like the next level, which I would say Fitzgerald is on. And then you have like another level, mm. which is H.P. Lovecraft. I gave up oh, on, yeah. 
I gave up on Read the Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah. Because it's like every other word is like, what the fuck? This is another word of the two million words in the English uh, language that I do not know the meaning of or the context of, so I give up. Yeah, uh, exactly. But, but maybe like one day I, I will get it and I will like have the patience to, to figure it out. Um, but anyways, back but to the But that's also, that there's so many books out there. It, it is also like you, you have to make a choice what you act, like what is actually important. If it's not relatable to you, yeah. then there's also no point in reading uh, through multiple uh, like tens and hundreds of words that you don't understand if you don't relate to the content or the context of the book anyway of course so so then then you 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 would probably be better off with just laying down hp lovecraft for for the next 10 years and reading something that is actually relatable to you instead yeah. Um, like The Great Gatsby or for instance right now I'm reading uh, Story Engineering as I mentioned Story Engineering by Larry Brooks and that is actually very easy to read because he doesn't at least the introduction he doesn't use any words that are at any in any way like not understandable to me so and plus he jokes a lot so that's that's a plus too I like um uh, writing that has a little bit of uh, comedy in it as well, so uh, so I enjoy that very much. Um, yeah. Or not not comedy per se, <laughs> but just like you know jokes. You know. I know. I know. Uh, when um, when you have when you have a sentence where he's like, um, the bar is high, but now you have a ladder. I believe I sent you that at some point. Yeah, that, man, that, that, now, was a, that was a good one. That was a now, good that, one. that's a funny yeah. metaphor, actually, yeah, I think. It is, uh, it is, it yeah. is. Um, you understand that. There's no, no word in that that you don't understand. So, uh, no. so, so that's cool. Uh, but, of course, uh, it is nice that you have some words that challenge your intellect so that you can always develop yourself. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, let's get back to the book. This will not be, like, a super long episode. Um so I need to like get back on topic. I'm sorry, but what do you think about the other characters in the book, like Jordan, Jordan Baker? Mm. Jordan Baker seems like the typical, like uh, attractive girl that, um, like, uh, like attractive but but intellectual and sweet girl that is just like the opposite of our main character Nick, uh, that has to be there. But uh, but as I understood it, at the end they don't end up together after all. Uh, she she is leaving him. Um, but uh, gotta say, man, yeah, I read the last part rather quickly. I don't know why, but but, uh, but yeah, I, don't know. I, I would I would say that you know like she is a very uh, career focused uh, yeah. woman because like she's she's what like she's she's a golfer, I believe. Yeah. She's yeah, a golfer yeah. and she's a pro, uh, and this is and this is what she does, right? Yeah. And you know, like like any other athlete, you can you know like you can be like so determined, like you know like this is this is what I'm gonna do, right? And yeah. nothing is going to stand in my way, kind of deal. And yeah, this yeah. is this is like what I always believed that her underlying mentality was, right? Um, yeah. So. To From, to her to her yeah. Nick isn't isn't a love interest. He is just a pawn or a brick that she can that she can lean on. You know that's there a support yeah. brick. Um, I don't actually think that we we hear that much about her. We could hear no. uh, we could hear more, but then again, it is also because the sto- the, the the novel is very brief in yeah, its essence it is, already. It is. So I guess I guess Fitzgerald just didn't have time to get into the backstory of uh, of Jordan, so we don't yeah. actually get that much information on her because we are so focused on Daisy and Tom, yeah, and, and but Gatsby. The, like, I'm like when I'm when I'm reading reading it even for the second time, I'm like, okay, you know what? Screw that. Screw Tom. Screw Nick. I just want to know more about Gatsby because he is the mysterious figure, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, and what really is like so fucking epic about it is that um, it's not everything that is bullshit about him, right? 
because yeah. at, in the beginning when or not in the beginning but when uh, he first takes Nick to the town right to talk to him and t- start telling her about like that he wants this what turns into a super awkward first meeting with him and Daisy after five years yeah. um, <laughs> then um, then then Nick is just, is just um, not impressed at all by him right sitting no, there in no, the car no. and you know like he's not saying a no. word and the uh, and like it's just in general just like a bad mood right and he's like you know i'm not impressed by him nah, gatsby is not finishing his sentences he's not making sense and all this <laughs> right uh, uh, and then, uh something that we all know and can relate to so that's yeah. just uh, that's just a sympathy trade uh, yeah. a sympathy trait uh, for for Gatsby, I think um, it is. It is. Yeah. But then, so, but then it turns out that you know, like it's not all bullshit. He was actually in the in the war. He was yeah, actually yeah. a li- yeah. he was actually a lieutenant, and he did go to Oxford, I believe. Yeah. Like, at least at I- least he had the picture. I don't know if it was a fake or not. Uh, I never never caught that. But, but yeah. Uh, uh, it is described that he was standing in an Oxford uniform. As confirmed, as confirmed by his father in in the in the in the last section. Yeah. Sorry, this is a spoiler, but yeah, like, it's fine. It's I fine, guess if you're if you you've know, listened this we, far in this episode, I guess can, you're, you, yeah, man, we can spoil it. It's a book that is a hundred years old. Yeah, it came out in but I mean, like, but that, but I mean, still that like. Uh, but but that doesn't matter because there are still people and I like I don't know if it's canonized or not, um, but but the things that are in uh, that are a canon of especially an American canon. Uh, by the way, like if for anybody who is not a literature nerd, I don't know if you know what a, a canonized means means. Please explain it for the viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so so a canon is basically literature that has been adapted into like a collection of uh, books of literature that is um, that is uh, that is uh, uplifted to a higher standard. That is uh, like basically it means that it it should be taught uh, or not necessarily taught, but it should be like remembered as the um, the the prime literature in history that that that's what canonized means uh, something yeah. that is a canon means that it is uh, it is basically a uh, superior form of literature i don't know like it's it's a very elite thing i know it it it, it kind of div- divides the classes in an unfair way that like between bad and good literature but but yeah, I mean, there there is literature that is better than others, and and the best works are canonized in that way. Um, yeah, and I, I like, get what you're like saying that, that so, they're yeah. becoming they're becoming established pieces in history. Yeah. Right? So while uh, and, while you have other I, pieces that is just forgotten. Exactly, and I think the Great Gatsby. I'm just gonna Google it right here but as we talk. Uh, it's the Great canonized. Gatsby yeah. has been canonized. Yeah. But, um, um, while you do that, I'm going to get get back here a little bit. Um, so yeah, it is not everything yeah. about our ma- man here, Gatsby, that is bullshit. He was actually in in the, in the uh, army, and he was a lieutenant, and he was dating Daisy those five years ago in a white uniform, a white lieutenant uniform, um, and driving around in a fancy car even back then, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So. So like so, so like that that really intrigued me and then you know like it's it's also it's also uh, funny that um, that he wants to clear up with Nick all these like rumors and stuff like and says that I, he hasn't killed a man and this is when he tells Nick his backstory where he comes from that his real name was James Gatz uh, and all that he tells Nick everything except for the criminal part of his life and i am sure that it is a criminal part of his life um because i'm gonna ask you now do you remember a part in the book where Mm. he he asks nick you know like you need money don't you old sport oh yeah where was that was was that in in the the, i think that was was, in the middle or that yeah it was it is like right before 
they, he sets up the meeting where he gets him to set up the meeting with Daisy, the first meeting. You need know, like you chapter, need money. You chapter four, I believe. Yeah, you need yeah. money, you know, the old sport, yeah. right? Uh, mm. And then, and you know, like, and start saying, "I got this side hustle going on." You see, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like thinking, <laughs> and I was like thinking, "Holy shit, man! Don't, they, don't, don't the guy sound like a damn con man when he says it like that, or what?" All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So, so, I just, I just spat, I just spat whiskey all over the, all yeah. over the, like, luckily my, my screen is so far away, so I didn't get any spit, but damn, I just fucking laughed, holy shit, man, that was, that was funny, yeah, wow, <clears throat> no, but the point is, like, um, as if I may to re return to the, the, the canonization of the Great Gatsby, uh, as we were talking before, um, like, uh, that, that also means that, um, that there are still maybe people that haven't read it before, and because it is canonized, then we have people that should be able to stumble upon the spoilers or the, 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 the big things in The Great Gatsby as they read it because yeah. it is a canon. So, like, because it is such a great piece of literature that it is that people should, should be able to stumble upon it themselves. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, I get it. But like, we'll just say it right here now that if you're anybody that's listening, this episode does contain spoilers and yeah. we will be talking about the end of the book. So if you are reading it or you're planning to read it, don't read further. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but yeah, man, back to what I was like saying, don't that sound like the biggest con man in history when he says it like that to Nick? You know, I got this side hustle going on. You see, <laughs> you see, and you need money, old sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and like, oh, and like also, like, even like talking about the bonds and stuff. So, like, this was like, and this was like before I read the Reddit post. I was like thinking, okay, he's into something. <laughs> he's into yeah. something deep. Um, yeah. And I, I'm just like 100% convinced on what it was, was that he was forging bonds. Um, and he was, and he, he, and he can't really be touched in New York because um, he seems to be friends with the police chief in New York. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, so like that might be like some of the reason why he's like staying in New York. But then there's also the thing that he chose to buy the biggest house slash mansion slash castle um, in the same area as Daisy. Uh, and so that yeah. he can look with binoculars over at Daisy's house, or maybe not binoculars, but he can at least like look over there <laughs> and see that there and see that there is lights. Yeah. And you know, like at this point, that was like also like thinking like, okay, he's either super romantic, or he's a fucking creep, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because he has waited five years and done this and hosting all these parties just to get her attention, to get her over to his house so he can talk to her, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, like apparently, like this, that this didn't work because Daisy don't drink, which we figure yeah. out is because like she gets this letter <coughs> from him when he's in the war, or uh, right before like she's she's getting married to Tom. Then she gets shit hammered, and after that, she didn't really, uh, really drink. Right, so I guess she never yeah. saw a, saw a point. Going over to one of his parties, yeah. And this is, uh, but it's still like you know, like baffles me that she don't know. She must have remembered his name, so she must have known that he was there. But I guess, like you know, like it's, this is just uh, too much for us to worry about for a little pocketbook, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, like, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Go ahead, man. No, it was just uh, I've just been googling around on on this uh, canonization of the Great Gatsby, and apparently there's different opinions about it uh, all over. There's a lot of blog articles that say, "Yeah, literary canon. It, it is. It is definitely in the literary canon because it's already in in the curriculum of uh, of uh, high school classes." 
Um, and and I agree, but there there's no definite place where you can find that it is actually in the canon. So apparently, it is still still widely discussed today. It is widely debated, which which makes this episode quite a lot more important, actually, yeah. because uh, because to this day. People are just still discussing whether The Great Gatsby is canonized or not, whether it should be a classic work of American literature or not. Uh, so what we are doing right now is actually engaging in that discussion, engaging in the, in the, in, in the debate of whether or not it should be remembered for future generations or whether it should just, well not be canon like it, it will still be remembered it will still be it will still exist but not like canon canonized works will re be remembered stronger because they will be taught over and over again and will be read by people 100 years from now and that's much more more pungent than than works that will just like fate or lie under the surface of humanity if you will uh, will lie under the surface of civilization so uh, yeah, there's a, there's definitely a big discussion about it, but I think it should be. So yeah, that's just my conclusion to it. I think it should be canonized. Yeah, definitely. Okay, like before we end it uh, and like talk about the ending, I have found it. You know, like I have found the proof uh, of uh, of the Gatsby was a criminal. I just sent it to you on Discord, hmm. and I will start talking about it. So apparently, like the evidence is uh, is on on the page. Um, mm. well, the evidence is, is as following: A. Nick sells bonds for a living, and Gatsby tries repeatedly to recruit him to join his team to peddle bonds that are apparently either ca counterfeit or stolen. Right. Uh, mm. I'm. I've said to you that I am leaning towards that it is not stolen bonds; it is counterfeit bonds. Since he was stressing in a phone call that he did not want the bonds sold in Detroit, he wanted them sold in a small town. Yeah. Uh, uh, evidence B: Nick notices well-dressed Englishmen at the party, whom Nick concludes are probably selling bonds. I remember this. Like he's like saying that like they they were standing a group of Englishmen by themselves at the party, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well dressed, and then the owl-eyed man in the library, you know, reveals uh, that most of the patrons at the parties were brought there, suggesting they were solicited. You know that they were approached that you're yeah, going yeah. to come to my party, um, and then evidence D. Multiple references link Gatsby to organized crime via Chicago, a city notorious during the 1920s as Al Capone's headquarters. Gatsby is repeatedly interrupted to take or make telephone calls from or to Chicago, um, uh, ostensibly. Ost ostensibly to coordinate bond scam activities. Evidence no. E. Nick intercepts a Chicago telephone call intended for Gatsby about someone named Park getting apprehended this is the, this is at the end of the book by the way yeah. um and and nick narrating long distance said chicago was calling the connection came through as a man's voice very thin and far away this is uh, slaggle speaking yes the name was unfamiliar hell of a hell note, of a note is isn't it, isn't it? <laughs> get, a note, wire. Isn't it? get my wire there haven't been any wires young parks in trouble he said rapidly they picked them up when he ha when he handed the bonds over the counter. They got a circular from New York giving him the number just five minutes before. Yeah. What do you know about that, eh? <laughs> you never can tell in these hick towns. Hello? <laughs> I interrupted breath. Hello? I interrupted breathlessly. Look here, this isn't Mr. Gatsby. Mr. Gatsby's dead. Uh... And the proof here is that it's revealed that Gatsby is involved in scam to sell stolen or counterfeit bonds. Most likely counterfeit, though. Uh, mm. And, uh, yeah, and, and that's it. Like the, and then the evidence is, like, following, right, as where they yeah. are, where they're, like, coming from. But, yeah, that is my take on it. And why yeah. is Gatsby a criminal? 
not because of the evidence, but like what turned him into a criminal. Then you have the backstory of Gatsby, where he came from nothing, befriended Dan, yeah. the the millionaire, and and Dan was so fr- fond of Gatsby that he uh, put him in his will to get everything. But because Dan was poisoned, or at least that's the presumption that he was poisoned by his uh, uh, by his new hot wife. Then the hot wife gets everything and Gatsby gets nothing. Yeah, even though yeah. he was uh, supposed to get something. So, in my opinion, um, in my opinion, he is just fed up with it, right? And he's been trying and he's been doing all this shit. And then he has, like, at some point in his life thought, fuck it. I am going to get, I'm going to get it, you know? I gotta uh, be. I gotta be very honest on this one. I'm not qualified to uh, to give an insight on this because, like, even though I've read the book, like, and that is again testifies to how how complex the story is because I've read the book. Uh, I've read every word in the book. Uh, maybe I read it too fast. I don't know. But I totally didn't get that backstory. And I know no. you have you've read it once uh, once more, and you've watched the movie, so that's maybe no. why you're a little bit better into like, it. But like, I didn't get that. I gotta say that. It like, was, it, I'm it, I'm lost on that what? one. <laughs> it was like the it was like the most uh, important thing in the book that, because it shows what the character who who this character is, right? What turned yeah. him into what he is, and and then like that his name was James uh, Gatz, but as uh, as a seventeen year old man at this po- this 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 point, he changed his name legally to to uh, J Gatsby, right, from mm. from his from his imagination, and that mm. is what he introduces himself to uh, to Dan as uh, J Gatsby, and from mm. and that's what he was like known as ever since. Hmm. And Dan took a liking to him. They become best friends, and that's what happens, right? And then uh, this is again like what I've said before that uh, that uh, um, why Gatsby don't drink because he is afraid of getting of getting screwed in the ass like like Dan did and get poisoned by uh, yeah, yeah. by a and woman. That, and that, that and that goes back to what that that, that go- goes that goes back to uh, so so that goes back to you know like to why he don't drink at the parties right but that goes back to uh that explains i mean like i lost my thread a little bit here but yeah that's then i mean then, it is a complex then, book yeah it is it is it's a complex you know to yeah, get the message yeah. out there because yeah he was he was together with dan at this time and he's a young age you know for a, for a couple of years at least uh cruising around the world on his yacht to the mediterranean or whatnot um and uh, and then he's just seeing that this woman is like boarding the boat and you know like seducing Dan and they drink together yeah. and then somehow yeah. mysteriously Dan ends up dead yeah <laughs> right <Whoa. laughs> after, after, yeah. after drinking right so uh, yeah. so naturally you know like he gets like really suspicious of wim- women in the future so he's very careful of who he hooks up, uh, who hooks up with and he, uh, uh, he, 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 he seemingly don't drink, or at least not yeah. quite a lot, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I guessing, like you know, like maybe that semi why he is uh, so fond of Daisy because like, she is, she is um, also a sober girl that don't drink, right? Mm. And they are, it's also like described somewhere in the story. I don't remember who said it, but. That uh, uh, the pro with not drinking is that you know that you can that you can time every um, mis coincidence, right? Where you trip or you fall or you do something dumb or you come up with an excuse to why you have to leave the party. You can time them perfectly and leave as you want and act like you're drinking while when you're not and all that. Right? Yeah. Uh, but that requires that requires that you are in a in that you know your circumstances and that yeah. and and not just that yeah. you know your circumstance but th- but that you're also that you are in a circumstance yeah. where you can pretend to yeah. where you but, can pretend like that. But he can do that because he has yeah, yeah. years of experiences from yeah, his parties, exactly. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And it is also we also kind of like see that he 
is a lot in the background during these parties. He's yeah, not. Yeah. He's not out there. You know, like look at me. Oh, right. I'm. I'm here. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm no, here. no. Because because that would eventually that would evidently fall uh, like lead to his demise. Yeah. If he if he was if he if he was to like present himself as oh look at me, then he would make enemies. But by yeah. being in the background, he is he is uh, he's very st- strategically keeping himself at bay keeping also, himself also at a safe cre- distance also he's creating the myth about himself and that's another because another epic epic message uh, of the, of the book if you move into like indirect message of course if you yeah. move into the spotlight you will fall eventually yeah yeah, um, yeah of, co- of course of course and uh, because you will uh, be attacked and yeah he he, like you know, like think about it. You know, like he creates this myth around himself because he don't he don't like uh, say to everybody at his parties. You know, like let me announce something. I want you to tell you all the truth, right? Yeah. No, he only does that to to Nick. Yeah. He only does that to Nick. You know, yeah. uh, and probably Daisy, even though we don't see that. But and uh, Jordan maybe. But anyways, yeah, that's yeah. That, that's 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 like the, that's what we're like seeing, like that he creates this myth because he wants to be this legend and <laughs> uh, this myth in the, in the background, right? Mm. Um, but moving on, since we like really have to end it soon, then yeah, yeah, sure. we have then we have the asshole Tom, who conveniently <laughs> gets gets rid of Gatsby in the end. By going to to uh, uh, George Wilson, his mistress's uh, uh, husband, and saying, mm. you know, uh, you know, like I have, like you know, like I'm I'm here for no particular reason, and I'm telling you this for no particular reason, but you know, um, Gatsby is is the owner of the car that killed your wife, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, yeah. and then leading to to Wilson. Um, uh, killing Gatsby and then shooting himself or committing suicide at least right after. Wow, you know. But yeah. so so many tragic fates in the book, and you know, like George really loved Myrtle. He did, uh, yeah. since he was like having that garage and and working so much because like he only wanted to make her happy, and still mm. and still she was cheating with Tom. Uh, but he never, he, but he never get to, got to know that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. The ending but, uh, was uh, was 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 crazy. It was wild. Like so much shit happened during the yeah. last twenty pages of the book. Yeah. And I know, I know, we said that this was a spoiler episode, but I I don't, I don't want to spoil anything. Like because like I I think like uh, maybe we've spoiled a little bit, but like you. People who haven't read it should definitely read it because uh, because there's still so much in the last twenty pages that you can discover that is gonna blow your mind. I mean, yeah. holy shit, man! That was just yeah. What? Yeah, like I, I'm not even gonna say anything more about it because no. Well, yeah, you know, like, we'll leave that for another episode. We can also go into like more depth on the book later. Yeah, uh, nah, we're, like we're I don't, I don't books, but, at uh, least but anyways, not, I, not on the ending. I can't. Like, like we, 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 we should leave the ending up for for everyone for yeah. like because as but, as the book will become or should become canonized, I think we should leave it up to people to discover the ending for themselves, uh, so we can I, discuss everything else but the ending. I think I can. We can agree on something though. Everybody should read this book. It's yeah, a book definitely. that will that will it always is, be timeless. It is a book that book. definitely demonstrates the Roaring Twenties um, before the set. I mean, like the, the time period is amazing. We are before the Second World War. We're just after the First World War. We're in a fucking hot zone of history here. And and Fitzgerald, the writer with Maxwell Perkins, the editor, uh, who who did an amazing job editing Fitz, Fitzgerald because Fitzgerald was not uh, he was very detail oriented, and Maxwell Perkins had this overarching view so that he was able to give a uh, give his uh, his take on the macro edit of the thing. So 
so yeah, that, it, it is an amazing time that this book was created in, and that makes it also canon worthy. So sorry yeah. for going off on the rant there, but I uh, thought that was important to to mention Maxwell Perkins as well, the editor of yeah. this book. Message yeah. received, loud and clear, man. Um, but yeah, I guess like that's all the, <laughs> we had time for today. And thank you all for yeah. listening to this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this episode if you found what you heard interesting. And also don't forget to check out Alexander's YouTube channel where he has uh, the Scandinavian Corner, which is a spin-off podcast to this. And yeah, that's it. Have a nice uh, Easter, everybody. And see you all in the next episode. Yeah, it takes a minute to like uh, get OBS up here and end it. But yeah, later folks. Enjoy.